My name is Jason Myers. I am the founder of Audit Chain, the world's first decentralized continuous audit and reporting protocol ecosystem. We are all about use case for blockchain. The best use case for a blockchain is accounting, audit, and financial reporting. Uh, we have a, a quick announcement. Um, we are very proud to announce that uh, Eric Cohen is our new head of XBRL architecture. And if anyone uses the Edgar system or reads SEC filings, you'll know that the XBRL taxonomy has been a part of the disclosure framework since 2009. And we never know whether to say you're welcome or we're sorry. <laughs> Eric is one of its inventors. So, um, green button. There we go. What's the DCARP Alliance? Uh, it's members of the investment, enterprise, accounting, audit, legal, and financial reporting community. Uh, you get to collaborate with enterprises and regulators. It promotes adoption of audit chain. Uh, we have educational forums, working groups, and events. And members, we hope, will operate nodes. So who we are, me, I've got 30 years on the buy side, the sell side, and the issuer side. I've chaired audit committees, um, I've run funds, uh, I've run uh, investment banks, I've had my own investment bank uh, for, for almost 10 years. Um, Paul Osling, he's the uh, head of our regulatory and government affairs, he's former chief operating officer for EY. Uh, Eric Cohen. My name is Eric Cohen. I'm one of the nuts from which the XBRL tree has grown. Been involved in helping bring accountants kicking and screaming into the, the technology world for over 35 years. Wow. So Charles Wang, XEY in fraud and valuation. Uh, Remus Vitauskas, head of assurance, systems and controls. Eight years with Deloitte. Eight years as an external reporting manager with Bristol Myers. And Josh Yabbitt. Um, ex-red team at NASA, built other blockchains, um, base protocol developer, Bogdan Fedor, full stack developer, smart contract, solidity developer, Ethereum developer. That's who we are. We're hoping to make audit and accounting sexy for the first time in how long, Eric? Well, in my world, a day or two. A day or two. Okay. We're going to keep the sexiness going. All right. So what is it? It's a smart contract platform. Um, and an enterprise does an implementation. Uh, you have a board, re re uh, board resolution. You have audit committee resolutions, employment agreements, equity issuance agreements, debt issuance, equity-based compensation, equipment purchase, purchase orders. Anybody ever manage an equity compensation plan here? Have been a part of it? You know how difficult it is to run those FAS calculations? It really is rocket science. Scholz was a rocket scientist. So we're all about real-time financial reporting. Audited, public-facing, or permission-based, XBRL-enabled for thesis-based reports, if you're a user on the outside. Uh, it's a two-tier node governance structure. Federated nodes are operated by licensed CPAs and auditors. Non-federated nodes are service providers and enterprises. Non-federated nodes monitor and validate the network state. They validate blocks, transactions, state of smart contracts, uh, installation and expansions, notification of non-compliance, validation of remediation, and enforcement of consensus. Federated nodes, um, they validate and certify enterprise service and device implementations very simply. When you certify an implementation and you join the network and you submit to continuous audit, the federated nodes listen to the originally certified profile and they listen for non-compliance. They listen for failure states. They listen for anomalies, and they listen for compliance of integrity of data output. We have our own economy. 
It's called the audit token. You pay audit fees, right? How much are audit fees these days per year? Depends on who you ask. Okay. The auditors would say not enough, <laughs> but with an appropriate risk and reward ratio. So an enterprise stakes a balance and it gets deducted every block for services. They get network access, uh, they pay for implementation, network services, transactions, and continuous audit. I'm going to turn it over to Eric, who's going to give you a little bit more color on the guts of the audit and the guts of the state of the audit and where we're going from here. Excellent. Thank you, Jason. So when you hear that blockchains and distributed ledgers are self-auditing and that we will no longer need auditors, what do you think about that? Most people think that the fact that you get some computers together and they can create some uh, really sophisticated numbers and primes and factor them out, that that means that everything is audited. But as a recovering auditor, I can tell you that the task that auditors do is much broader. Now, we may actually be moving, as the original visions of the crypto folks of the past said, to a world with no accounts receivable and everything in real time. But in the meantime, the things that you see on the board in front of you uh, yes, maybe we can do some completeness. Well, I've assessed all of the existing assertions that management makes, and what is audit? Going and obtaining the evidence to support the opinions that uh, whether or not what management has said in their assertions or the subject matter, whether that fairly present what goes on, it's a lot more than completeness. We have the things related to your balance sheet and your income statement. We've got the things about the presentation. We've got the things about your transactions and management's assertions here. Those things aren't solved by simple computers on their own just doing math. We need to have the right knowledge in place. We need to have the plugins with the auditors and the business rules and the analytics. We need to have the transactions that we can analyze for all these things here. And just the fact that it spells Velociraptor doesn't mean that auditors are dinosaurs any more than the existence of blockchain and distributed ledgers. What it means is that something that I have been lo looking for for over 20 years working with the audit community, the accounting profession, the academic community, the technical world. The reason that I invented XPLGL, the reason that I've worked with the World Wide Web Consortium in areas of XML signature and XML encryption, the reason that I've worked with the academic community in continuous auditing, monitoring, and reporting is about this ability to bring together the right pieces because what we're talking about here today is something that the profession needs to be able to continue the great work that it's doing to continue providing quality support as we move into this increasingly electronic age. Yes, the AICPA said in 2012 that the loss of the audit trail was the second biggest risk that there is. Blockchain distributed ledger technologies with standards are the things that can bring us into the future and beyond, providing new services, additional services, dealing with questions about independence and who pays for what and how this all works. It's just a really fantastic thing. I've got the button. I was going to tell somebody to move on to the next slide. I tell me to move on to the next slide. This is the picture we've been talking about. This is why we created XPL GL. This is why we've created XML encryption and, and other things. This is the thing that we've been waiting for blockchain and distributed ledger to provide for us is where we can have standardized, generic, holistic, immutable, cryptographically supported public audit trails that we can have the black box of, of enterprises that we can go and do this kind of thing. Wherever the transactions are taking place, the business events, be able to take them, record them in a way that can be standardized. Move that into systems, but at the same time, run the little clickers against it. Be able to do your business rules, be able to do your analytics, be able to have triggers and alarms and systems of monitoring and control. Uh, to have the thing go off to reports and have standard-based reports at any time. Uh, we want to be able to do the continuous reporting so people can get the information they need. Uh, Sarbanes-Oxley 409 says we need real-time reporting. All the, the different rules around the world say we need systems of real-time or really, really close reporting. So now you can have the things coming out in the automated ways using the business rules, not to say that management can't come up with what they want to report as well on a periodic basis. So if those of you who go into the study of this, there's an uh, accounting professor from the 1960s named George H. Sorter 
who was promoting something called events accounting. And he said that when you take a report and you summarize it, you aggregate it, you are losing information. Management makes a decision of one type of valuation, one type of estimate that may meet some stakeholders' needs, but not others. So when we can have the real time, different sets of rules being plugged in, different reports as necessary coming out, let management also come up with their reports, but have that link so that you can say, this is what I expected, this is what's come out, be able to compare them as well. So this is a picture that I drew up um, around 15 years ago, and it's something that today's environment enables for us. It's all about this black box. The information goes off, immutable, public, but cryptographically supported, so you're not losing your competitive advantage. Only the people who have the right rights can get at the information. Take it, standardize it, hash it, put it onto the immutable chain, send it off, have the auditors auditing and listening, have management being able to monitor it, different services plugged in to provide analytics, valuation, or, or other means, and have it go off in that way. It's not just about data, it's not just about holding people responsible, it's about revolutionizing the entire way that this all takes place. All the systems hooked in, uh, the work papers and the people and the auditors and the businesses and the managers, and making a new environment where everybody's needs are met. And it's about interoperability. It's not about our chain as the best chain, it's about interoperability. It's about the auditors listening, it's about each member of the audit information supply chain being able to contribute to the process in an appropriate way and have processes and rules and analytics and sets of controls, resources, assurance and, com and comfort, hook into logistic systems, hook into any third party and provide any other additional helpful context that you need. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about groups of people who come together and say that this is a vision that they want to be part of. This is a vision that What's the name of that already? Carpe Diem? Is that the name? DCARP. The DCARP Alliance. Alliance. And how can they be part of the DCARP Alliance? If you go to www.dcarpe.org and sign up to become a member. If you're a part of the investment committee, you should especially sign up uh, because it brings you on the inside of what we're actually doing. If so you're a venture capital sorry. firm, you should sign up. If you're an enterprise, you need to sign up. If you're an accountant or an auditor, you should sign up. And what if they want to be one of these people in the platforms that are providing the, the nodes? They've got some services that they want to be able to hook in to make all this even richer. Join the DCARP Alliance. I, I hear all roads going to the DCARP Alliance. Join the DCARP Alliance. All right. Jason, thank you very much for sharing that time with us today. Thank you for coming, and thank you all for coming.